Joining us now is Oji Okwe with Stories Trending Around the World. Hello, Oji. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you today? Okay, just take charge. I will, as always. <laughs> always. Good morning, Victoria. <laughs> you know when I call you Victoria. <laughs> I know what it means. <laughs> Good morning, Rafai. How are you? Oji, my charge for you is to take charge. I will. <laughs> good morning. And good morning to you viewers. We begin what's trending with reactions to President Mohamed Buhari's warning that he will not allow the repeat of the nationwide NSAS protest that demanded the dissolution of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad Unit, or SARS, as it were known. The president, in a meeting on Tuesday with the National Security Council, said the relevant stakeholders, including the youth, will be carried along with the activities of the government. He added that he will continue to lend a listening ear to the people and their demands, as well as initiate regular dialogue with stakeholders so as to avert a repetition of the wanton destruction of public and private property and avoidable loss of lives. Meanwhile, Nigerian Afrobeat musician and one of the foremost promoters of the NSAS protest, Shewu and Nicola Kwakuti, on Tuesday, held a briefing just hours after the Lagos State Police had surrounded the Africa Shrine in an attempt to stop an NSAS protest meeting organized to discuss lessons learned from the protests. Shewun had taken to social media the day before to criticize the government for clamping down on people's right to freedom of association. He said his family received a badly written letter from the Lagos State Police warning against holding the meeting tagged mass meeting, NSAS, movement, lessons and tasks. The musician, however, decided to revive a political movement of his late father, Fela Anikula Kwakuti, called the Movement of the People. Well, let's listen to what he had to say about the movement and the letter he received from the Lagos State Police. This is the movement that is built with the people, that is built for the people and will be run by the people. We want to be able to create a new Nigeria where there are no more special Nigerians that will have to be the leaders. Nigeria citizens can no longer meet in this democratic democratic dispensation. First of all, um, manager is spelled as manger. I'm not joking, I mean I'll pass it around, you can all see. The grammatical error of the letter, so many things here just jump at one as so inept. You know, it's, it's almost laughable. If it wasn't this serious, this is comical. You know, and I'll read the letter just look it so that you all can get it. I write under the corporate social responsibilities and the unprecedented support to allow sir police station about the mass meeting of the movement of the people, tag answers movement, lessons and tasks, which is to emerge. I'm reading that is read, I'm reading it as yeah, this is on the edge. <laughs> you know, not, this is not my grammar, please. Nice. Which is to emerge <laughs> on Tuesday, 17 November 2020 by 12 noon, venue African Shrine in Kedja, Lagos State. I want to quickly recall your attention to the recent NSAS protest nationwide, which states the nation in the last five weeks and end of being violent, and end of being violent, causing multifarious mm, destruction, looting, and burning down of government and private properties within the borders of the state, as well as causing death and injuries to both security agents and innocent law-abiding citizens. Which, for me, is the reason for them to come and protect us. You understand? Anyway, but it is on this premise that I, it, it, it is on this premise that I write such a gathering, <laughs> I write that such a gathering or meeting plan to be hosted at your venue is not welcome at this perilous time when the security of the nation is not welcome you at this previous time when the security of the nation is trying to find her foot not one foot not two feet but many foots <laughs> it was a lot more than many foots that was in that letter <laughs> dr abati but i mean i couldn't believe the letter when i read it two days ago i believe it was sent on monday and it really needs to be investigated because it shows a whole porous you know system of government at this point that whoever is responsible for writing a letter is not able to do that 
But also, the issue about the clampdown of the Africa Shrine was a big problem yesterday. A lot of people were outraged because basically it wasn't a protest that She Wung had planned to do. I think it was a meeting just to talk about lessons that have been learned during the pro um, protest so that they could find a way forward. I'm very proud of Sheung really because he went ahead to continue the movement um, that his father had had earlier. And also with um, President Mohamedou Buhari's um, reaction to the NSAS protests, I mean, I think it is welcome in what he said. In, in terms of the dialogue that he wants to continue to have with the youth. But I think a lot of people misunderstood the fact that he said, I will not allow it to repeat. But I think it's just the idea of having that repetition of the wanton destruction and also the loss of lives that he really meant to say uh, that he wants to prevent. Tundu. Well, you're completely spot on. Yeah. And I'm going to do a Mr. Ifeni now. It's yeah. most unlike me to start <laughs> criticizing the headlines. Yes. But you know, Mr. Ifeni has taught me a thing or two. Oh, good. So I appreciate the way this day couched that headline. Okay. Buhari outlines action plan to forestall reoccurrence of hashtag NSARS protests. That is a realistic, a factual portrayal Very, of what yes. happened. Other papers ran with clickbait. Right. Or, or he forbids this, it's sounding really draconian yeah. and authoritarian. And when you read the substance, it's completely different. So thank you for that, Mr. Fenny. And I agree with you, OG, with regards to um, Shemun Kuti's um, situation. What is a political party without meetings? How on earth are you going to ever reach a consensus? Are you going to make your plans? Surely that should not be criminalized. It's, it's completely uncalled for. And this is the contradiction that I've been talking about for a few days. The president, at, and it appears, at the center, you have the president taking a conciliatory approach. And then you have others really waving a big stick. Really, what is going on? We need a harmonized federal government approach because it is the primary duty of government to ensure the security of Nigerians. That's section 14, subsection 2. Thank you, Dr. Abati. <laughs> yes, so that's actually his job to do. But then it's, it's how we go about it. You must have politics in Nigeria now. It's 2020 is around the corner. You have to have these meetings. People do have to, you know, mobilize. There's nothing wrong with that, right. surely. And that letter is shocking. And I have to say, Dr. <laughs> Abati was brandishing his red barrel earlier. I wish now, that was I, You know what, now, I, if, even apart from the words that were used that were wrong, I cannot stand gratuitous capital letters in the middle of a sentence. What, why did they capitalize private? And <laughs> words, like words like that, that, that really It's creates, a big problem yeah, to And the punctuation police here. Yeah. Okay, let, let me start it from the back, where I ended earlier. Now, I said Akimo Dumosu, who is the uh, commissioner of police for Lagos State. I mean, he's a graduate of English from the Amadou Bello University. He's the author of at least two books on the English language. Uh, one of them is titled Principles of English in which he wrote you know, extensively and scholarly about grammar, structure, syntax, and all of that. And to now have a knowledgeable man like that <clears throat> as commissioner of police in Lagos, and under his watch, his men, even the, uh, uh, the Alausa uh, police station, will be issuing this kind of letter. I think that you know, there's another assignment that he needs to pay attention to. You know, I said earlier on maybe he should uh, uh, organize language clinics for his men. But the truth of the matter is that, look, every organization, whether it's the police or whatever, should have a quality control unit. If somebody writes a letter, maybe it was written by one uh, constable, you know, but at least there must be people within the system who can it. look at it, uh, check it, approve it. Even the, uh, the opening, uh, uh, the address refers to the manger. <laughs> Africa shrine. It's shocking. Now, not manager. Not the manager. So, I mean, maybe the, uh, whoever is the constable or the recruit uh, that wrote that letter, imagine that the Africa shrine is a place where wild animals uh, gather. So, he had to talk about the, the manger. So, this kind of thing is embarrassing because this letter has gone international. It's all over the social media. Can you imagine somebody working in Metropolitan Police, London? looking at this, and you say, is this the police in Nigeria? Yeah. And then that just validates for you all the issues about accidental discharge, mismanagement of ammunition, because you, you, people will wonder, who are these characters? I'm telling now, second you. second point, there are many Nigerians who have said, look, the minimum qualification for working in the uh, police should at least be a degree. 
And those people will find a justification in this. Say, people cannot even express themselves. People cannot write a simple letter. The third point is that it draws attention to the collapse of our education system. When we were in primary school, they would teach you the structure of a letter, salutations, uh, this and that, you know, school. punctuation and all of that. Now, how did it go, go so bad in Nigeria that you can't even have ordinary people wearing uniform who can just write a, 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 a presentable four paragraphs? Even in media houses, really in newspaper no houses, do you know that at a point... We have to establish not just a rewrite re desk, also you know, a, a teaching. The, the, the newspaper has become a university oh, no. because you have to teach this, even the ones that are graduates, you have to teach them how to write a successful sentence that can fit into you know, a, a standard uh, 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 structure of English. So that's, that has that. Tundu has made a point very well Wait. about the fact that, look, you can't stop people from forming political parties. They have the right under the Constitution. You cannot stop people from meeting, associating. You cannot also stop people from expressing themselves. Senator Ogunlewe talked about the fact that, oh, Sheon Kuti should not have mixed uh, NSAS with the uh, movement of the people. No. I mean, the NSAS meeting was to be a review. He did not say That's the, the agenda of the he, he did not say they were going to stage a protest. Yes. He talked about lessons and tasks. Yeah, you can In other words, yeah. what yeah. lessons can we learn from NSAS? That's okay, it. they don't want people yeah. to learn lessons again. No, the, the, the universities police. are closed. If it is the movement of <laughs> <laughs> if, it, <laughs> if it is the movement of the people, people have the right to organize politically. Of course. Right? We said young people should show interest. Shemkuti is a young man. He wants to bring people together and say, look, let's revive a certain ideology that is people-oriented. And then you say he cannot meet. And then the family said, well, we don't want trouble. I think the meeting still heard, but uh, there was a uh, lower No, attendance. it was closed. Uh -huh. they, they, this was a separate meeting called the Movement of the, of people. the people. The shrine was closed because the family didn't want any No, but yesterday, yeah. I mean, if you went to the shrine yesterday, you know, there was security presence yes. and all. That kind of intimidation yeah. contradicts That's the, right word. the position of the president and the National Security Council that the government is interested in dialogue, stakeholder meetings, and, uh, you know, dialogue and uh, support and justice for the people. But what we have been saying, either the uh, arrest of Eromosele or the uh, harassment of Mudupe Odele or, you know, the freezing of uh, bank accounts or the use of a, uh, an agent to uh, take uh, about 50 persons to court, all of these are contradictory. And the first step is for the president to say all of that must stop because he, as father of the nation, as leader of Nigeria, uh, does not want that. And Tudu, you are right, and that's a lesson, not just for people who cast the headlines, also for readers of newspapers. Do not just judge a story by the, the headline. headline. Because yes. a lot of people, once they see a newspaper, they just see the headline. No, I couldn't even take any reactions because they, they, they didn't make any sense. They write Everyone the story, just, you know, write the story in their the own heads. President. Before you jump to conclusion, read yes. the story. Correct. Rufai, your take on the story. I mean, I'd like to recall all your attention to very pertinent things in this country. And uh, you're still in the process of recalling your attention. Uh, to the fact that this is just indicative of the fact that we have lost it. I don't know if you guys got the point I was trying to make here, because that was in the letter. I recall your attention. I mean, we've lost it a great deal. And it's something we can laugh about, but it's something we should be crying about strongly. Uh, we have an educational system. Yes, we can say probably a constable wrote that. But you'd be amazed. People with master's degree in this country can't even write any better, Dr. Abati. Uh, you need to see some people with PhDs. That's why it has gotten to a point in this country, you wonder the institution that churn out PhDs. You need to see the way they write. And, and it behoves on all of us to take things seriously in this country. It's, it's looking like we're losing the ship. And we need to be very critical about it. I feel very sad for my country today. Well, may we not sink like the Titanic. We're I never just pray sink. so. Amen. Amen. It, feels it will like never we're happen, Rufai. I, right. I assure you. We'll take another story. Nigeria's Federal Capital Territory Administrator has reacted to a viral video by a restaurant owner who alleged that her business place was shut down illegally by the Abuja Municipal Council area. In a series of tweets on Monday, FCTA said it was the court officials that sealed the restaurant following her disobedience of a court order. 
It added that the action followed the failure of the restaurant's management to prove that their staff conducted food handlers tests as required by the law. The restaurant owner, Leila Othman, has however apologized to the Federal Capital Territory Administrator and the Abuja Municipal Area Council for false accusation. Meanwhile, suspected officials of the Abuja Municipal Council area were seen in a video trending on social media demolishing a departmental store in the Wuse area of Abuja without prior notice and with people inside. Let's take a look. Yeah, they did not even inform people that are upstairs and they are demolishing the building and their shop is open upstairs. They did not even inform us. Our life is in danger. Our life is in danger here. Very, very unfair. I know, this is really, really bad. Ah. Employers are here working. We are upstairs and they are demolishing downstairs. This is really terrible. This is really terrible. Thank God one of us just beat from upstairs. Whatever was upstairs. They said one order from above. See what Nigerians are doing. Is this our problem? This is really terrible. This is terrible. Our life is in danger. Our life is in danger. Our life is in danger. We have million, mi mi millions of products up there. Our life does not matter to this government. This is injustice. This is really terrible. This is injustice. I'm coming. I'm coming. This is wickedness! This is wickedness! Let me kill him! This is wickedness! This is wickedness! This is wickedness! I wanted to play that video because, I mean, I could not believe what I watched yesterday that this man with the tractor was going to demolish a store knowing that there were people inside. That's my outrage with this video. I mean, the other things I think you guys discussed earlier with uh, Rotus and the business segment. But I, I don't understand where we've gone wrong in the country, really, with this situation. Well, I think it's really important that you played the video yes. and we heard the woman's hysterics, the woman who was filming it, her understandable hysterics. I mean, anybody would react like that. It's extremely upsetting. But Rotus, in the name of... You know, Audi, Alter and Potter, right. we always hear the other side. Rotus gave the explanation advanced by the council saying that this person who was supposed to have reserved that lower floor, the ground floor, for a parking lot. And my question was, at what point was he given a stop work order when they saw shops going up? It's better to give a stop work order before the building goes up like this rather than wait, have people move in, have people invest, and then come and demolish the building. It seems really inhumane, even though, yes, of course, they did say that the owner of the building flouted violations, no, did not pay this or that, loopholes. and then um, there was something to do with trees as well. I'm not sure if the proper punishment for these violations is to demolish the building. <clears throat> well, I mean, as you said, we discussed this earlier on, but just very quick points by way of uh, summary. One, there is a lot of sadism in you know, the corridors of government. Yes. People think because they occupy certain positions, they can just be sadistic. You know, and I guess maybe that's a reflection of the experience that we have had collectively as Nigerians. People just want to use their position to inflict punishment you know, on you. You know I agree with that. We made a very strong point about building approvals, the National Building Code. Even when these laws have been violated, I mean, people should act with the milk of human kindness. Mm. And then three, you know, I also raised the point earlier with uh, Rutus about corruption within the system. Now, when these approvals are procured uh, or are given, sometimes, you know, there are certain things are overlooked uh, by certain desk officials who now say, well, go ahead with your building, don't worry. But tomorrow, another person comes to that same office who may have a different attitude, and he will say, look, there are violations. We are going to enforce the law. So what you have is the failure of institutions. But persons who have been affected, if they have very strong case, I mean, they can have recourse to the law. 
in a, but on the other day, when uh, IFLS building was demolished, he contested it. And the state government, in fact, ended up rebuilding the uh, structure for him. So it's for the people, if their rights have been violated, not to sleep on their rights. Beyond that, we cannot make any presumptions. Yeah, but there is a lot of um, loopholes in terms of communication. That viral video with um, the lady, Lydia, who was crying, uh, talking about the fact that they had closed her shop, her restaurant, with people inside, was because she was not communicated to. And that was the reason why but she you didn't. She, yes, she, you she's, she apologized. She's apologized. Though. That's what I've just read. Yes. She's apologized now. But so there was some lapses on her part. Exactly. Yeah, but don't uh, don't let us always blame the federal government. This is the thing. Exactly. In Abuja, there, there is the FCTA, well. right. uh, Federal Capital Territory Administration. There's, there's also AMA, AMA. Yes. Yes. Abuja Municipal Area Council. Right. Because when people say this government, this government, you know, you have to locate it appropriately. Yes, yeah. that was. Uh, Rufai, please, your quick take on the story before we go. I mean, I'm quite sad. You guys have said it all. Uh, you start to ask questions like, do we really have empathy in this country? What makes us human beings? And even if there, somebody has violated the law, is there not a better way to go as regards that? Is it always we have to demolish and destroy? Haven't we demolished and destroyed properties enough in this country? But... When you look at it critically, it, it goes even deeper than that. You know, I don't know. It's just a sad day. I, 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 I don't want to say it because you, increasingly Nigerians are losing basic empathy for one another. And it's shocking. Dr. Abati used a very strong term, sadism. That's what I see everywhere. That's why when somebody's hell-bent on collecting bribe, no matter how much you tell him that, see from my own point of view, he doesn't want to see from your own point of view. Right. I saw that sadism in the eyes of that custom officer that wanted to collect 300,000 naira from me. It's shocking. Oyeka, when he did a video in 83 about corruption in Nigeria, if you play that video in 2020, it's still very valid. Right. The squadron well, of riches, she yeah. titled it, and right. she just published a book. And I think it's quite interesting that everyone should read. Rufai, Thank you very much, I had other OG. uplifting uh, stories, but I'll take that tomorrow. Hopefully we'll tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. we will be happy. <laughs> Thank you very much, right. OJ.